Welcome everyone to another quick video. The other day I purchased a NVMe USB enclosure here, which is actually relatively nice. It's the usual 20 euro stuff. Um, what is nice from this one, not a paid advertisement, just the next best one I found, but that it's tool free, right? So yeah, just many are of course to screws and stuff, but yeah, it's just some plastic thing. And um, even here, there's an Intel Optane in there, but even that is tool free, so just some twistable plastic knob. Um, and I make this video because initially I was super disappointed because I thought um, some similar enclosure was written on some internet forum that it includes the JM Micron, uh, here JM S583 or whatever. And usually I prefer this JM Micron because they are the more stable and usable because as you probably guessed and you're in my experience, so many cheap silicon implementations are full with bugs, right? And so last, I, I really hate this. I mean, who, I mean, everyone hates this, right? Stuff, you, you try to use stuff and it's randomly buggy, errors out and, and crashes every other hour. And so I plugged this in and uh, I saw their Linux kernel, um, a Realtek RTL uh, 9210, match USB vendor product ID, quirks, not using uh, UAS, USB attached SCSI. And for those, I could make a dedicated video, but that is basically the new high performance protocol. The old fashioned USB storage protocol that has been probably around for 20 years or more since the invention of USB for all the um, old fashioned USB sticks um, of, of uh, whatever USB stick sort um, is old and worked for floppies and stuff in USB 1, but for high performance stuff, USB attached SCSI has performance benefits of using new USB 3 and newer USB streams for high performance data transfer. So I was obviously very disappointed. I mean, yeah, 20 euro and stuff, but obviously even if you only spend 20 euro, you want some high performance and working stuff. And when the Linux kernel reprints marked quirks, broken and stuff, it's like, like due, thank you very much. Um, the, the one thing I really hate them. <laughs> In life is broken silicon but turns out uh, the other day so i have this already since some weeks and i wanted today i quickly wanted the, the usual stuff um you have five minutes you want to try something but basically what i wanted to do today is try patch this away and um see if it works because so often previous video um, some year ago i made a video the linux kernel upstream also disallows smart um, packet path through for all Seagate drives, which is wrong, only some 10 or 12 or so dozen Seagate drives were buggy a decade ago. So T2 is only Linux kernel. I tried to send it upstream, was rejected with like yeah, um, being on the safe side. But yeah, so turns out um, others beat me to that, um, namely uh, Yu Yung Park. So and it turns out this was actually wrong. So what was previously here, oh, there's even, sorry, removal. Uh, wait, why is this so, must be, anyway, long story short. So I didn't have to remove it anymore. It's the latest kernel since January uh, 23, once I'm gonna commit her. So whatever latest stable kernel, whatever. So it's brand new. So other also had the same conclusion, right? The commit, I probably just moved this I because I div only this one file. Probably the, the removal was from, from some generic works table. Um, but basically, long story short, turns out the RTL chipset after all is not that broken and it actually can work, right? And it's exactly what I wanted to test today and someone else did it earlier. The thing is, it's like earlier commit here, adding high semi USB 3, whatever, ignore USB attached. SCSI UAS disallow list that for all. And so, yeah, this is the usual stuff, right? Just one thing is broken for whatever firmware or what, maybe one broken firmware, one early firmware, who knows, whatever. And it's exactly what I wanted to test, right? And my suspicion was correct um, that indeed it, it is not that broken, right? So I can confirm this works. I um, rebooted the latest kernel, FZ, and now I get 900. 
39 or in total 923 megabyte per second on uh, this Intel Optane, good old silicon, obviously, uh, obviously. So what I basically can confirm is other testing that actually here's just some other random test in German with some other enclosure, certainly the same. Also, yeah, obviously the performance usually is the same if you're wondering, because obviously all the, the only integrated circuit here with the firmware usually is more or less the same, um, except the only difference, the firmware or wrongly designed analog physics components there. And so yes, this performance I can confirm also um, over USB 3. Point whatever Gen 1. Uh, I can co also confirm this. So initially I was, and then I was disappointed and did do only get 400, but turns out some of my front port negotiated, I thought it is, but whatever. So yeah, 400 up to 900, 900, uh, whatever was it, 930-ish uh, megabyte read. Um, that is amazing, so much better and relief. Just wanted to point this out if you're looking for some enclosure. Also in general, do some quick Google search for the integrated circuits, which are usually in there. Um, and not and also one surprise. So basically this test came out here of like, yeah, positively surprised actually works quite well um, compared for the most part compared to this uh, J Micron. Except like maybe here some write with R write with, with whatever. Also, it has one benefit. Apparently it also supports serial ATA. I didn't test that. So if you sometimes, yeah, have, I mean, it, it's super rare, right? I don't know if this enclosure supports this. I would guess there theoretically could be M.2 SATA. SSDs, very rare kind if you have those. And one surprise is also it consumes less energy. I didn't measure that myself um, because this is like on my test test bench and embedded stuff and, and testing T2 Linux embedded stuff and so on. So I didn't measure the, um, actually I could uh, theoretically, I have a USB measurement, but it's only USB 2. But um, this report at least claims your mileage may vary that apparently this newer Realtek silicon can at times consume less energy, at least compared to this older Micron J um, S 583. So anyway, recurring theme, not every comment and quirk in the Linux kernel is right. We saw this with the Seagate drives. And in general, you need to be careful and apply some common sense just because the Linux FreeBSD, OpenBSD kernel lists something as broken might just be that I mean, often it is broken, right, 90% of the time, but there can also be chances that it just randomly didn't work with one device, or at that time the developers did it wrong, sync security mitigations, or the USB Firewire network protocol stuff. And maybe there was a bug in the implementation, um, and it only was not working due to some compatibility things and so on. So yeah, um, always worth a try, re-evaluating the stuff, which someone else has done already, amazing stuff. So I can go back to work, copy some data, um, do some more stuff. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon for more in-depth tests, code, and fun to come.